5.15 a.m. Um, I'm up, I'm awake, and it's time, it's time to go to Portland. I got the Nike hat on, let's do it. We're here in Portland. We're actually at the hotel. It's called the Inn at Northrop Station. It's pretty cool. It's kind of crazy looking, but uh, it's nice. We're gonna head out right now, try and find some food, check out some stores, let the food digest, then do our pre-race. We got three miles and some stuff on the track. It's gonna be good, but uh, yeah, let's just get to it. We're gonna go get some food now, so. We found another place. Uh, first place we went to we clicked on the sandwich it said $14 and then we realized that's for half a sandwich and for a full sandwich it's an extra 12 so we're like we're not going to and then on top of that we probably need the bigger size which would be 30. yeah I have one right here and then uh, and then we there was also nowhere to sit so we're like we're not going here so we found this new place it's actually really nice uh, we already they, they already gave us these things which are pretty neat uh, beignets. beignets like a donut oh like a donut yeah um, but they're good it's French for donut it's French for donut. We're gonna start the pre-race. It's just 4422 uh, at mile pace. So we're gonna try and hit roughly 5960. I actually forgot my spikes today, so I'm just gonna be running in just street flies. Uh, and so I'll probably lag off Leo for a second or so just because there is a difference between spikes and street flies, and I don't wanna uh, you know go harder than I need to today because that's not the point, obviously. So uh, yeah, let's get to it. footage for this video I came to realize that we actually had a card failure on all of the footage that we shot for day two on our a camera it's really unfortunate obviously we didn't want that to happen but you know from bad circumstances we're here trying to make the best out of the situation so we're still filming this interview and we're still right now going to give you everything there is to know about that second day the race what we did before what we did after and how it went we spent most of the day kind of just relaxing and chilling before the race because you don't want to do anything too strenuous but that didn't stop us from enjoying the city a little bit we woke up did a little shake out a mile up and down the street then we came back ate some breakfast and headed out into the city we walked around maybe for an hour or two not anything too much we you know we were just trying to 
get a sense of the city, see some views, go to some cool shops because Portland's a really interesting city. They have a lot of unique things that we wanted to check out. After that, we headed right back home, took a quick power nap because I think sometimes that can really help before a race. You get the extra boost of energy when you weren't expecting it. Then around five, we headed out, left for the race. It was at Mount Hood Community College. It's a pretty stunning area, just with all of the trees and then Mount Hood in the background. Mount Hood really is a crazy mountain. Like, you don't realize how much it just erupts out of the ground. Like, it's, it's a volcano, so it's gonna look like that, but it's, if you've ever seen a photo of Mount Fuji in Japan, it's very, it's very similar looking to that. Um, so the venue was awesome. The, the temperature was a little bit warm. Uh, it was a little windy, but that calmed down. So by the time we raced, it was pretty decent conditions for a 1500. My race, well, it was the same race as Leo's, but for me, the way it went out was the gun went off and I was into the back. I, I knew that the race was going to be quick, but I thought I'm just going to hold on to the back, try and you know, stay with the pack, get a good time, kick it in. Uh, but the pace was pretty quick. I mean, <laughs> maybe that was just me settling down from doing the 5K and all of a sudden having to try and split 59s instead of 65s. So it's a big difference, but it felt really darn quick. A lap in, we were at 59, two laps in, 159, three laps. I started to fall off the pack and I think I came through a lap to go in like 246, but then I closed it down in about a 57. So I was actually detached. I was detached from the pack, but I made sure to still close it down hard. The race was still within the realm of times that I was proud of. You know, going into it, I thought I could run around 340 to 344 and my PR was like 346 going into it, so I knew it was gonna PR because I'm just fit, I was fit for it, and there was no way I wasn't gonna let that happen. But I didn't know exactly how it was gonna go. And before the race, in the race, I didn't feel my best. I think on the scale of how I felt, it would definitely be towards the worst end. Not, I, it's not like I felt horrible, but I did not feel electric. I did not feel just completely uh, awake and, and, and activated but I still try to make the most of it. And considering I still ran 343 in those circumstances, I think when I feel on the better side of the scale, a t the time could be much quicker. I think 343 converts to four flat. So I would say perfect race. I'm probably in shape for 356, 357, but that's also uh, hard to say because I've never run that time. And you know, I've only had workouts to, to maybe hint to that so it's really about whether or not that can be put together in a racing situation so i'm really excited to get a chance to run that at nike i think that's the opportunity to run faster than four flat maybe hopefully go under and that if it's ever going to happen is when it's going to happen yeah so my race i thought that it was good um in general i thought that it was really productive in terms of learning and gaining experience uh that's really what i'm looking for in every race um i mean second to only second to PR and I guess we're looking to become better athletes but yeah uh, I'll kind of talk about it and explain where what I think was good and what I think was bad um, I think initially uh, going into the race my primary goal was to be as deliberate as possible with my moves and to be very focused on uh, putting myself in the right position I think that I did a good job of that at the start but then slowly uh, slowly my um, I don't know, my, my focus on that kind of diminished throughout the race. Um, right when the gun went off, I did think I did a very good job of getting towards the front. I could have done better. Um, what I found was that the very start my position was good. I was only a few people back from the pacer, but because I was, I was kind of right in that prime area where people want to move up to, and I think that because of that, that meant that as the race went on, I was kind of the first person that was getting passed as people tried to get in the right position. Maybe if I went up a little further, um, I would have been in an easier position, easier spot to defend my position, you know. Um, but uh, besides that, I felt that later as the race went on, as people were passing me, I did a poor job of making sure that I was in the position that I wanted. And I think that that, that had a negative effect on the outcome of the race because it meant that towards the end of the race, maybe 500, 400 meters to go, um, I wasn't really an event at event. I was, I had no advantage over the rest of the race. You know, I didn't have a good position for moving and for making moves. Um, and I think that in a 1500, that's really important because a lap to go is really when things start to get interesting. And um, I essentially had nowhere to go. I, I mean, once we got 200 to go and stuff, I basically, if I wanted to speed up, I was sprinting into a wall because there was a wall of people in front of me. If I wanted to go around, I'd have to be in lane three, which is 
immensely difficult to do, and I guess I did a poor job of um, committing myself to any one of those things, and that meant that I was kind of just stuck in the middle of the pack, and that's exactly how it stayed through the end of the race. It was, um, I ran 3.39 basically for the, the fourth time in a row, which is, uh, I don't know, kind of painful, but um, I definitely need to get that down, but yeah, in general, I mean, I think looking back, I, I'm realizing it was a good learning experience, and I mean, you can't be mad about 3.39, it's still a great time, so yeah, overall good. Uh, aside from that, uh, I'm terribly sorry that there was the card formatting error. Uh, trust me, Lex and I are plenty angry about it. It makes it a bit more difficult to make the video, but I hope that you guys think that it pulled together just fine. Um, besides from anything like that, all the seasons are ending, so I hope everyone's had a great season, and I hope everyone's excited for uh, their next cross season, or if you don't currently run, I hope you're just enjoying the sport, but yeah. Uh, maybe, uh, oh, what would be cool is, uh, go down in the, go down below this video and like it. Um, we never really ask people to like the video, but I am kind of interested to see like how, if, if that really does play a role in the way YouTube recommends it or anything like that. So if you could do us a huge favor, just like it, and then we'll be able to derive some data from that, um, which would be super cool. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. And we'll catch up, up we'll catch up with you in the next one. That's it.